square on my computer. And I'm going to pull up, oops, here we go. Screen, share screen, and here we are. Okay. Okay, I presume, presume guys can see my screen. Just a little wave there, Barry, if you can see. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Now, this is um, a topic that's going to be more important to people. Um, I know Barry's going to be traveling off in the next couple of weeks anyhow, so this will help him. Um, I know other people have traveled to races or will be. So it is a uniquely stressful occasion. Traveling is stressful anyhow, but when you're traveling to a, rest, a, a race, it becomes even more stressful, mainly because we're tending to go to areas that we don't know. And the real other thing is we have all this equipment to bring that's very fragile. So these are going to be hints and tips from my experience. And you'll be delighted to know that I've done 12 trips between various marathons and various Ironmen. And I've screwed up inordinately as in really badly. Um, and I'll use anecdotes to highlight this, but it means that you guys learn from my errors. So first off is pre-planning, okay? And pre-traveling. This is really important. Um, where's the race location? Especially if I've gone there before. And what you really need to know is where your hotel or your accommodation is gonna be. And what you want that is close to the race venue. It's got, um, it's easy to access. Um, and it's got good facilities. So you do, you do need to be a bit, bit of research. Now, my first example, there's been two races, one in Mallorca, one in Italy, where I actually, when I was given the responsibility of booking the accommodation for the group traveling, I booked on the wrong side of A, the island, and the other one was B, the actual, the actual country. And we got, got there and we started driving towards, and my friend was going over, and he was doing the, the car rental thing, and he went, the race range is here. Why are we going this way? So this is where my GPS is telling us to go in the hotel. So first, a learning there is do not let someone like me organize logistics because I am a wonderful coach. I am shocking at logistics. So none of my friends are allowing me. But when they do, they look at the race venue. They actually ring up the hotels. They do their Google searches and they go booking.com and they ring up and say, listen, how close are you to the start line or how close are you to the finish line? And if the, the person on the phone doesn't know there's a race going on, that's, that's something that would have happened if I did it. But um, you just need to make sure. And it, it's key to make sure you're coming to a place where it's, you're limiting your travel and your hassle on race day. And yes, you can save a, a couple of quid by being out, out, out of the town. But then you're looking at having a rental car, having to drive in on the race morning. There's nothing as uh, reassuring that um, you, you can walk down to the race start, you can walk back, etc. And this happened when I actually allowed the guys to book for Mallorca. They booked a hotel and it wasn't much more expensive than the other hotels around, but it was literally five minutes walk from the race start. So when we went down in the morning for transition and we checked our bikes and we checked our tire pressure, yada, 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 everyone else was kind of milling around. We walked back because the rate that after we'd gone into transition, make sure everything's set up, there was kind of an hour and a half to kill. So everyone was queuing for porta potties or la la la. Myself and my friends, we walked back, we went to the hotel toilets, we lay down in the bed for a while, and it was perfect. So they're the things you need to know. A nice hotel that's close to it. And again, do the research, call them, check, talk to other people who've gone to race venues and find out the really good hotels around there. Um, and in the facilities, I put this in with one of my friends who's much more organized at this stuff than I am. He insists on getting a ground floor room I went, that's a, and, I went, and then I thought about it. Brilliant. No stairs, no lugging uh, with, 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 with sore legs, no lugging a bike up or down a, um, the step in a lift, etc. Really clever. And he, and he would specifically request on the ground floor room. Excellent planning. In terms of booking, um, book when you figure out the right hotel and it's in the right location, book. As I said, most of the times that there's the, the cancellation policies are very generous and you're not going to get hit with any cost, even if you have to pull out um, three days beforehand. The next thing is, how are you getting there? Again, if it's a, if it's a foreign race, and I'm, I'm assuming this is a foreign race because when you have to fly or la la la, you need to check out flights, rental cars, ground transportation, etc. And... Um, 
And again, I'm using this as an example of when I'm going to Florida, I've got, gone through this. <laughs> Ironically enough, I'm going on my own to Florida. So there's a complete possibility I might end up in the wrong country. But what I've tried to do this time is I have um, worked out where the race venue is, what, where, what's the closest airport I can fly into, which is around a five hour drive, unfortunately, but whoever. Um, I've talked to people about the best rental car options, which are the, the most reliable, which are the ones. And again, you're also looking at, I need a big car to stick a bike in. So there's all these things you have to work into. And when you're do when you are booking your flights, I tend to try and give yourself a lot of time when you arrive and minimize transfers if you can. Because again, I'm going to assume that you're going to be bringing the bike with you on a bike box. We'll talk about the other option of bike transport in a second. But if you're bringing your bike and, a tra and, and it's going and you're going to whatever, New York, and then you're bouncing on to Florida, there's a, the more pops in that journey, the higher the risk of your bike, your bike ending up in the wrong country, in, in the wrong area, which is every triathlete's nightmare. Um, turn up on race day and you have no TT bike and all the rest. So again, take that into account um, and do your research, check out your airport options. If you are, if, you, if there are going to be time zone changes, make sure you get the times right in terms of your connecting flights, etc. cetera. Um, for me, with the flights and the car rental, the cancellation policy seems to be a bit more aggressive. And so I'll only book or really tie down my flights and my and the things that I don't have a generous cancellation policy with um, around two months out from race. Because at that stage, you kind of know, is, is it game ball? Am I, am I looking at any injuries? Anything life going to throw in the way? Probably not at that stage. You can't lock it in. There is the other option of buying the more flexi fares a bit more expensive but you have a chance of getting cash back i prefer to not do that because can almost plant seeds of doubt on my mind i prefer look I'm two months out flights booked car booked i don't have to worry about that anymore um there there so that's how are you getting there now the really important question how is your bike getting there now most people will use um a bike box and again for people that know the bike box is something that you can unassemble your bike to to a certain extent or a large extent depending on how, on how flexible the bike box in and it allows you to transport it on a plane and um, there's different types there's different versions some are better so, uh, some some are a bit more risky my my call is get a hard if you're going to use a bike box you're going to invest in one get a hard shell bike box these are essentially big plasticky, toughy things like they're like little plastic tanks you stick it. You can take the wheels off, take the, the pedals off, take the derailleur off, and in slots. And it will it'll it should be safe. Um again, just also accept that there were that these when you're putting a bike box into a plane, there's a certain risk that it can gonna get get chucked around. Um, but as I said, so the harder the case the better chance you have. And also when you're packing it, I tend to pack all my sundries around my bike box. For example, my wetsuit will go around the frame. And so therefore that's additional padding. And um, my, my pull board from bringing will go in between the spokes. Again, that's a little bit more security there. If I've got some training gear, I'm gonna use the day before that goes all around the kind of components. And it just, and bubble wrap is your friend. Get as much bubble wrap in there as well. Um, so bike boxes are good and I prefer that. That's my, my preferred um, option. It's a once-off investment. You will need to book the bike box on separately in terms of when you book your flights, you'll have to go, by the way, I am booking, bringing a bike box with me. And they go, okay, there's additional fee for that and there's only a certain amount of slots. So do it when you're booking your flights. And um, again, typically the flights you'll be going out with will be a lot of traffic, bringing a lot of bikes themselves. So get in early. Uh, for example, on Aer Lingus flights, they only allow six bike boxes on. And um, so, again, I knew with the flights that most people go to Florida, I got on, I booked mine straight away. The other option, and it was available in Ireland, um, but it kind of folded a little, is something like a tri bike transport. This is a company that specializes in transporting your bike to a race venue. And how they do this is they've got specialized trucks or whatever, and you will, there'll be pickup points where you pay them a certain fee, whatever, $200, $300, whatever. It's not inexpensive, but it does have pros. 
what you do is you t- rock up with your bike, you give them the bike and possibly a, a bag, if depending on their terms and conditions, and they will transport your bike to the race venue where you will meet them. They will give you your bike fully assembled, nothing to worry about. And off you go, race. And again, on the way back after your race, you give the bike back to them and they will bring it home on the truck or whatever they did. And, and you will pick it up at your home venue. And they tend, they tend to do pick up points at local bike stores. So it is quite handy. It's a little bit pricey, um, but there is a pro on it that in the sense that you do not need to take anything off the bike whatsoever. Now, this is the one downside of a bike box. If you're anyway mechanically inept like myself, the taking off a seat post could cause severe palpitations. Whereas these guys, you give them the bike, they literally, they have specialized trucks where they lock the bike in place and they transport. There's nothing taken off like so. And so that if you are just a little bit nervous about the bike, that's it's also an option. But again, you need to give them the bike a week in advance. You don't have access to your bike, yada, yada. There's options there. Um, my preference bike box and a very sturdy one and one that requires a minimum amount of uh, on disassembly. Um, I'll send you pictures of mine. It's called a bike box Allen Aeroflow. I got, all I have to do is take the wheels off. Like I don't have to, I don't have to take the TT, the, the air TT bars off at all, where you used to have to do beforehand. Um, so they're the, they're the options there, and do check that out. The other, another thing you want to check out is when are you getting there? Um, a lot of people will just arrive two days before, just in time to register and do your event. I'm not a fan of that. I'm of the opinion you've trained six months, uh, eight months, whatever, for a big race. Give yourself as much time to get out there beforehand because things will go wrong. So I, again, and I guarantee you, I'll be flying out tomorrow to Barcelona to support the guys. But I guarantee that on that flight, there will be a cut, there'll be around 10, 15 athletes who are just going that day. And what will happen is someone's bag will get lost. Someone, someone will have palpitation because they've literally got two days to fix it. Whereas if you go out three, four days beforehand, you get to climatize. You get to kind of get to the race venue. If something goes wrong, you open up your bike box and there's a spoke bent in your, on your wheel. You have plenty of time to get to the local bike store and get it fixed. If you have a day to fix it before you have to put the bike in transition, this nervous and energy and the stress will be immense on you. So you just get out early, take your time. And again, but people can work from home now. Um, a lot of people, if you're in, if you can dial in and all the rest, you can do meetings, you can take calls. Um, You've invested so much time in it. Don't pressurize yourself. All right, so that's pre-planning. Um, what have you got here? Now, actual travel. Um, packing, okay? So this is where a good checklist is uh, vital. I do have a checklist on my website to download it, by the way. Um, I must make sure that's up to, up to date. Um, but there's also apps on your phone, which you can create a, a, a kind of cool checklist. I have that as well. I mean, because there's certain things that will be specific for certain races and that I want that won't be applicable for all that I have to add in. Um, checklist or an app, have it in the place and just make sure you go through it. Um, give yourself time. Don't try to pack the night before you're flying out because I guarantee you can't. And again, I'm going to assume that you're going to use a bike box here. So you have to put the bike in, la la la. Um, your pedals get stuck. And again, maybe I'm just weak arm, but I can never get my pedals off. And so therefore, I'm always going down to the local bike store with the guys and they have, I was about to say, specialized spanners or they don't, they've just got strong arms and they manage to take the pedals off and they, and they kind of pat me in the head and say, don't worry, Stephen, a bit more gym work. Um, but I always, I always do my packing in three days before I'm actually going to travel because it just means if, the, if I know that and I go, oh, and I'm laying out my kit, I said, actually, I don't have enough Morton gels. I need to go to the shop to get them. If I have a day or two to do that, Again, all about stress minimization. Um, there's going to be there's some pretty good YouTube videos on this um, about how to pack and all the rest. By the way, of which I'm going to be creating one because I like creating YouTube videos now, as everyone must have seen. Um, and it is essentially just just thinking end to end, laying out everything as if you have, you're you going to do the race instead of get out with my swim stuff. That's my wetsuit. That's my uh, goggles. That's my swim hat. That's my race belt. That's my uh, body guard, et cetera. Bike, shoes, daddy, yada. Again, per your checklist, 
and lay them out and then slowly start putting them into whatever bags you're bringing. Um, in terms of do's, do also think end to end in the race. If you have a plan and you need to have special needs, you're going to use a special needs bag on the run or the, the bike and you're going, to, you're going to put a modium there or you're going to put salt tablets in there, make sure that's on your checklist because there's no point to sort of going over there because you'll be going over trying to figure out what the word for a modium is in the French in a French uh, pharmacy when you're in Nice or whatever it is. Bring stuff with you. Again, minimize the stress. For me, I, as I said previously, I pack most of my items in my bike box, but in my, uh, and because a lot of the stuff is kind of heavy and the bike box heavy, and you can use it to kind of pad stuff around. My foam roll will go in there and again, and I'll put in kind of my, my uh, spare tubes in there, put socks in, and they use that to kind of pad around. Um, this is a new one um, because of, I've gone to whatever, 20 races where I've gone abroad, um, but I've never lost a bike. And again, fingers crossed I don't, but I've seen a bit more frequency just when all the um, things are a little bit bananas in with the airline. Getting one of those bike trackers or like those uh, little um, items that you can put into a bike box or attach to your bike and it, it links to your app. If the bike gets lost in the airport, you'll find it. If the bike ends up in New York and you're moving to Florida, you can go, by the way, lads, here it is. I think it's a good investment. I think it's around um, $20, $30. I need to look into it. I will get one for Florida. Um, again, just peace of mind. Again, another thing I do is say, put your gels in the bike box, put your nutrition in the bike box, because again, it's it's more protecting there, it's less chance of getting burst um, or getting squashed in your hand in your carry-on, or well, actually your carry-on, it might actually take it away from you. Um, other things to bear in mind, if you're going to a very exotic location or just something that's very different to you, and you don't think that they'll have the type of things you would like to eat for breakfast, if you always eat oats, or a specific brand of oats, or you always eat a specific type of bread, if you're gluten intolerant, yada, yada, bring that specific food with you again. Why? Because it minimizes stress on the morning of the race when you're kind of going, oh no, I need that. I don't like the hotel peanut butter. Bring it. As I said, just think of race morning. I'm not telling you to bring all your food, but just like race morning, when you have your routine, bring the things that will give you that routine. Um, another thing as well, do take the pressure out of the tires. I didn't one time. And what will happen if they're going up in a pressurized container, they actually can swell to the point. And if you're at high PSI, things will burst. So you're, you're getting over and you're going to go, oh my God, both my tires are burst quite dramatically. Again, I'd give myself three days beforehand so I, I could fix the problem, but I would have preferred not to not do it. And by the way, don't bring it, don't bring a track pump. It's like actually literally bringing coal to Newcastle. Um, I laugh at everyone, um, and you warm in the training, any ways you go in, hotels will happen, race ventures will happen. Every second track you will over there will happen. It's just an unnecessary piece of equipment. You will find it. Um, the do research a good bike store on the other side. Again, look at the forums, look at um, uh, the pathetic triathletes or the triathlon nation and ask about the race venues. Um, they will sort of tell you uh, if, again, which of the best bike stores nearby. And again, this is in case anything goes wrong. As I said, you find that your brakes are rubbing when you get over there. You want to be able to turn up and know that if you go to this bike store, they will sort out your problem. Hey, Pete, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Um, we've gone, we've gone through a lot of stuff here. Don't worry, it is, this is going to be relevant to you, especially when you're going to Kashkai, but I have recorded them, the front half of it so you can catch up. I'm just going through right. what right. you, um, you know, actually travel. So we'll pick up a couple of things here. The Another kind of key takeaway is take pictures of what you're going to do, of what's going into the bags or what's going into the bike box, just to reassure yourself, because you don't want to have that, oh my God, moment in the, in the airport lounge. You go like, did I forget my runners? And you go, hang on. There's the picture of what went into my luggage. There are my runners. I'm good. Calm down. Um, so again, it's like back to that point. Reduce all the stress. Everything you can do to kind of minimize. Because traveling to a race venue, tra to, we're going to race is stressful. Worrying about some of the equipment's going tits up, even more stressful. 
And some key don'ts that I picked up along the way, do not pack CO2 canisters anywhere, not in your bike box, not in your carry-on, not in your luggage. You will find that the regulations vary wildly from airport to airport and also from person to person. Um, so I, I've, I've never found um, it written down that it, they, they're not, they, that they say they're not gonna explode. Now I have, I have by accident got put them through in my bike box. It wasn't picked up on the on the x-ray but whether it did explode no but it's not worth the idea that someone's going to break open your bike box to try and pull out what they what they think is a danger item co2 canisters when you get over there they're probably two dollars five dollars at a race menu buy them don't bring them with home which you just throw them away if you didn't have them. another lesson as well do not pack tailwind in a plastic bag or anything anything powderish in your carry-on luggage, you might end up with a rubber glove examination. And I do not mean this in the Sufferfest uh, FTP test version, as in if the <laughs> traffic are strange individuals, so we, can, we carry things in plastic bags and we look like we're trying to do something dodgy. Airport security doesn't like us. Don't give them any reasons to bring you for an internal examination. Um, things that I also, again, from over time that I've learned and I'm more comfortable with, the things that I bring on carry rock, um, carry on mice. I bring my helmet. I actually put my pedals and my cleats um, in my carry on bags. Why is that? One, the helmet, if that's it, gets knocked around, it re reduces the structural integrity. And it's something that I do not want malfunctioning over there. So if I sit it on my lap or sit it in my uh, overhead, I know no one's kicking it around. Um, the pedals, they're very hard to get right. So even if you have to go over and you've lost your bike and you get a rental bike, if you get your pedals and your cleats, you've got 50% of your bike set up correct there because your, your foot will be in the right place. Um, so that's one way of minimizing risk. Um, and as I said, the <laughs> don't, I actually used to work as a, a luggage handler in Aer Lingus in my summers when I was in college. So whilst you may put fragile on it and you know take care on your bike bag and all that. The, air, the, lag, the, the baggage handlers don't care. They see fragile, they think football. So anything you can kind of take with you that's not going to be damaged is okay. Helmet's key. You don't want to lose your pedal. You don't want to lose your cleats. Bring them with you. Um, the other item I've learned as well, do not padlock your bike box um, because it, it, it makes the security guys nervous and they'll just, they'll just cut it off. And then they'll, they'll open the bike box and they'll throw things around. So the best way if you've got a bike box is you cable ties. It means that if they, if they want to, they can snap it off and there's no issue with them. Um, and it, it looks less conspicuous. And again, it means you can always replace the table ties. All right, so that's the actual travel. Um, bum, bum, bum. Actual arrival. What should you do? When you arrive, the first thing I do as I unpack and I assemble my bike. And um, why? Because I want to identify and resolve any issues if they've gone wrong. And this includes taking the bike out for a quick spin, um, going up and down the road, going up and down the gears, making sure the brakes are, spin the wheels, the wheel's not buckled. And the reason you do that, as I said, if you're there three, four days early and something's gone tits up, you know you can book straight into the local bike store that afternoon and don't wait because what the longer you wait the more triathletes will flock to this bike store with their major problem and it's their it's their life that's going to end because they have their their brakes are rubbing or their spoke is broken get there early be polite be nice to the local bike store and everyone's stressed they'll help you out but you'll give them more time and they're much appreciative if you're there four days rather than the morning of the race um do take your time, lay out everything when, you, when you're unpacking it. Like, okay, right, that's fine. I have brought everything. Nothing's gone wrong. Uh, oh, no, hang on. I have forgotten my charger from my Garmin. What I'm going to do. If you're part of a group traveling over, I guarantee someone else will have it. Just figure out what the gaps are. Or, or worst case scenario, you can buy things over there. As in like, oh, no, I've forgotten my race belt. Go buy another one. Like, minimize the stress. Um. As I said, do take out the bike for on day one or day two and just uh, just go up down the gears, brakes, spin the wheels, or make sure everything's working. Um, 
And the other thing is do check out the race venue as part of your day, a couple of days there. As I said, check out the swim start, all the familiarization points and, uh, and the transition bags where things are set up and get things done early because the earlier you get then, the more time you get to sit down and relax. And then you'll see all the guys who arrive in the day before panicking, going and stressed off their minds, going, where's, the, where's registration? It's that way. Blah, blah, blah. Everything about many and things. The only don't I have is don't go bananas in the expo. Um, now, mind you, I'm also often guilty of this. I've, I've nearly knelt in my credit card and, and every expo I've gone because I go, oh, that's kind of cool top. I haven't seen that. Um, there's a, if you wait a couple of days afterwards, Ironman typically has a sale of that race venue and 30% off online. So just take your time. All right, guys, I've 